used an instance variable for the checkpoints and you already saw an example of using instance variable you already saw an example of global variables I don't really know which one to pick what do you want to do should I use an instance variable or should I use a global variable instance variable it would be done like that x respawn y respawn Instance, I have one person for instance, instance, instance. I will take two as a majority and go on. So yeah, what you want to do is keep your respawn point somewhere. So I will set x respawn to uh, player.x and y respond to player dot y <coughs> that's um, here on start of layout we are saving the position the starting position of our player the problem here no excuse me not a problem what I tend to do myself when I do something like that when I use um, an object property inside the same object um, action or condition I tend to use the keyword self that's uh, equivalent as what I just wrote self just mean get the object I am actually referring to if you don't understand this, it's not a problem, just don't use it. If you understand it, use it. <laughs> it's made for uh, it's made to be used. So anyway, I will respawn I will um, set my respawn point here and when I die, instead of restarting the layout, I will go back, I will set the position of my object of my player to self you see it here as well x respawn and self y respawn here and here we will test that now it's not complete of course but we'll test that if i die i go back if i pick some uh, some coins i will i have three coins i go back i have three coins Thank you, uh, Chinkan. Four coins, I die, I have four coins. But now what happens if I cross a checkpoint and then I die, I go back to the beginning, because it's not over. This has become useless. Since we don't restart the layout we don't uh, go back to a checkpoint what can we do here's one possible solution um, if if we didn't pass the checkpoint it means uh, this value is still at minus one so what we can do is checkpoint equals minus one you go back to the position you had here and you can do a new thing that I didn't use last time I think is the else condition it means if this wasn't true if this event didn't trigger this will always trigger I shouldn't use the word trigger uh, it will always execute if this event didn't execute this will always ex execute so if checkpoint is not minus one it's something else so else I will pick a checkpoint and go back to this checkpoint this can work uh, 
I should do this here as well. So for our two waste, I will create a bit starting to get messy. Dying. Dying here. And I will put it underneath here. Okay. Group uh, is uh, are pretty neat to uh, organize your your code. So use them. So here we have our two ways to die, and they should be checkpoint aware. Let's see. If I die, I go back, and if I cross a checkpoint, and then I commit suicide. Oh, it's not working. And <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, else order equal check mm -hmm. what do you think what do you think Everything. order checkpoint minus one mm -hmm. oh here a blank uh, condition I it was a uh, if I had fallen, it would have worked. So here it works. I cross, I die, and, and I'm going back. So it's working. But to me, uh, it's starting to get a bit. Uh, you know, repetitive. I missed anything. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, fuzzy rat. They can have another function other than visual. They can be used as a kind of control flow. I don't like to use them that way. But that's, that's only my own uh, opinion. You can use this. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Action. Uh, layer, layout, layer, layout. Set group active. You can activate and deactivate groups. So they are a way of controlling, of skipping some part or enabling some part as you want. Uh, they can be handy for a really big chunk of code to disable, enable, but I find them a bit um, unreliable because um, you can change this name whenever you want, but the event associated to it won't be updated. can do mm, like that. Uh, here, if I do this, I will never be able to die. I deactivate the dying uh, group. And if I commit... Oh, where are you? Okay. Uh, if I commit suicide, I don't die. I, just because I deactivated the dying group. So yeah, they can be used to yeah to enable disable a whole part of of uh, of, uh, of code. Uh, there are this problem. If I say dying two, oh, there's a control over that. So one good point: I can't put the name of a group that doesn't exist, but I can do I think this and that doesn't update so you can you may have to do a lot of uh, search and replace if you want to change the name of your groups the other thing is that people may uh, sometimes think they can disable some of their uh, enemies for instance some of their instance by disabling a group but a group since it's the whole it's a structure in the whole event sheet they will disable the part of the event sheet but not per instances so uh, 
it's not that uh, usable for that. You'd, you'd rather use something like, um, I really create, uh, uh, just for the sake of the example, I, uh, oh, god mod. And I can do something like, I create a new condition, and if god mod is to 1, for instance, and put all this underneath, you have a way to disable all this code, and to me it's kind of more reliable. Because you can as well have an instance variable and disable some part of code per instance. So that's, uh, we'll see, uh, I prefer keeping this for next time, we'll, s we'll implement uh, enemies and you'll see the full power of uh, disabling, enabling some of the instance. Oh, do I cover that actually? If I, d I don't cover that in the Neon Platformer, but I can surely cover this in the next, uh, in the next lesson. Just show you, for instance, an enemy that shoots at, at you when you are too close. I can try to make that quickly. I don't have any graphics for that, but I will be able to show you how it's done. So anyway, um, if I don't have time next time to show you how it's done, I will surely make a video about this, so don't worry. Okay, so yeah, uh, enabling, disabling, groups is possible, I just uh, use it rarely. I, mm, I, I don't say I never use it, because it's wrong. I, uh, I made a, a, a game not long ago where I had a tutorial part. I uh, enabled a whole part of code for the tutorial part and disabled it afterward. So yeah, it's, uh, it's handy for a really big rough uh, enabling disabling. Anyway, uh, so we have these two ways to die now, the dumb way by falling and the other dumb way by spiking yourself. But, as I said at the beginning of the course, repetition is a bad sign. What happens if you, what happened just uh, earlier, I, f I had that, I forgot to copy this part here. So that's a problem. It's not a good thing to it's not a good thing to have to change many parts of your code uh, each time you want to make a simple change. It's the problem of repetition of code is really that each time you want to update something you will have to update everywhere. It's wrong. There's for a long time, there wasn't uh, any real good solution. There was a solution like this one. You could have a boolean, which is either true or false. And you could do something like dead. And on both of your, uh, your um, events, you could just switch this thing to dead. And sh I think I did that on the Neon Platformer. So you could do this and then you can do something like uh, player boolean is dead and you do everything underneath. That's some way to do it. There's another way to do it. You can use also an OR block. You can do it this way. You don't even need the or um, the death, the dead um, uh, variable. Just the or. The problem with the or construct uh, to enable this, I was a bit fast. It's a right click on the event make or block, and you drag any uh, condition in it. And you make or 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 etc. 
the problem with this solution you noticed uh, maybe when I did that this is that you